This is the Think Tool Mini from Think Car. It might be small, but it really packs a punch with its bi directional features and coding ability. So, we're going to take a look at this today. Okay, so OBD Zone got in touch with me um, and asked me if I'd do a review on another scan tool. Naturally, I asked for a nice, expensive bi directional tool, and they actually sent me this. So, this is the Think tool mini from Think Car, designed in California, made in China. Um, it is a bi-directional scan tool. So this tool is absolutely packed with features. If you see the chapters below, you could skip to the bits that you're more interested in should you want to miss out the other stuff. But hang around because this is a really interesting tool and there's plenty of stuff in there to talk about. So this can be had for just under $400. And if you check out the links in the description, uh, you should be able to get some discount with that and also free expedited delivery. Uh, just see the instructions below. If this video helps you out, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content just like this. So in the box, what do we get? We of course get the unit itself. Uh, it's a nice little size. We'll talk about this a bit more in a minute. You get the charging cable, which is a USB-C. Uh, you also get a manual and a activation code. Uh, it's quite important that you get that activation code there. So you'll see here straight away that there's no cables. Actually got the OBD dongle is stored inside the unit itself and it's quite small there. So this is a wireless unit. Um, Really nice feature from a scan tool of this price. The dongle itself is really quite small and quite basic. What I do like about it is the indicator lights are on the front of the dongle there. So once it's in, depending on where your uh, connector is located, you know, some of them kind of get blocked up the lights, where, whereas this one, as soon as you plug it in, you, you, need, you only need to look at it. So good thing about the unit itself is once you end a session, it just warn you that, um, you know, remember to remove the dongle. There we go, hard to miss. So uh, something that they do boast with this uh, unit is it's actually modular. And if you unscrew this cover off the back there, you'll see that there's a, an extra kind of connection port where you can add different uh, extra tools like they've got a printer, an LED light, you can attach a bore scope. Um, some features I'm really interested in is they've got a thermal imaging camera and also an oscilloscope that you can attach on the back of there. So I'll be really interested to see what uh, those things can do. What we also have is this little thread on the bottom there. So that allows us to attach a tripod. Of course, with it being uh, wireless, you don't have to have it around the car. You know, it's, I think it's Bluetooth. So you've got your normal kind of Bluetooth distances. What are they like around 10 meters or something like that? So we've got the power button on the top there. We've got a camera. We've also got under here the USB-C for the charging and another USB port. Um, underneath this cover, there is also an SD card uh, slot for extra memory. So they do call this the, uh, the Mini for a reason because it is a lot smaller than the, uh, the Think Tool, the, the bigger brother, if you like. And if you actually just see the screen size, it's about the same as my iPhone 12, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, however, after using it, it's, it's plenty, it's, it's big enough. Okay, so software then, it is an Android based uh, tablet. Um, the noises that you'll kind of hear on here as well are quite similar to some of the other tools that we've Basically, these ones aren't being shy about the fact that it's launch powered. We can see there on the startup, we've got powered by launch. And they're not hiding the fact. Also, there's an option to purchase manufacturer specific software. And I went ahead and bought the BMW one. It was only $49 and it's, it's well worth it. And we'll take, a, we'll take a look at that after we've had a look at the core features that you get um, straight out of the box. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you the tool like this. I'm gonna record the uh, screen itself on the phone. Um, it does have a screen record feature as well, however, I'm gonna do it like this because it's easier to just point at things on the tool as we're going along. So we're going in for the automatic VIN scan there. We can see that the OBD dongle has also lit up to tell us that it's communicating. And there are those also familiar sounds for those people who are using launch-based uh, equipment. So 
we can see there that it goes in and if you go in um, without purchasing the manufacturer software it actually goes in slightly differently you get presented with a different set of features so here we get this screen where we've got um, we can automatically search for our vehicle manually select we've then got the coding programming special functions function help and anti-theft system system which are not available on the base system However, we're going to go straight in here for automatically search and that will take you to the same place as if you hadn't bought the manufacturer software. Now, when I did this before I bought the add-on software, it actually went in a lot quicker than this. So I'm assuming that it's taking a lot more, uh, it's taking different checks to find out what's on the vehicle, whereas before it just kind of scanned straight through and, and went in quite quickly. Okay, so here we are. So first on the list, we've got the health report and system scan. So they're basically our diagnosis features. If we do the health report, it actually goes in and does like quite a visual um, check of the vehicle. And we get like this percentage countdown and this kind of animation of the vehicle. It also gives us a bit of a timer to tell us how long it's took to do it. And it is pretty quick. You see there, we didn't even get to 20 seconds there. And from here, then you can then go in and read your uh, fault memories so okay so now we're into the engine control module As we can see there we've got the read fault codes these are the problems that we've got here on this car so everything that you would expect from a scan tool of this price um, so we've got module information read fault code clear fault code we've got the read data stream there so we can go in check the full fuel air system we've got rail pressure actual we can see there we're in a diesel here so we're at 300 bar at idle rev it up a bit we can see that increase go over here to a graphical display and there we are we've got an auto ranging graphical display on there for the data so the other thing that we've got in here is a freeze frame data so that's for uh, the fault code so we should be able to see when these fault codes happened and all the data that was um, stored when the fault code occurred. So that's very useful information for diagnostics. Um, always make sure you kind of go and check that out should you be looking at kind of intermittent faults because that should give us a snapshot of when that problem occurred and it might help you kind of replicate it if you're having troubles doing that. Um, here we go then. So bi-directional features um, unfortunately on this car there wasn't much to choose from we've got delete fault memory and electric fan however I did see another person using the same tool and when they went into the engine control module they had a whole list of things so it really does depend on the car I'd have thought they might have supported a bit more functionality on there however when I went and bought the BMW software, it did come with some extra bi-directional features which were really quite good and we'll, we'll take a look at those in a minute. However, if we go and check out another module, um, let's just go in the other way now. So this is system scan. So it does pretty much the same kind of thing as uh, the health report. And we get our list of modules here. So let's go and check out something like uh, footwell module FRM there we go so that's kind of like our body control module on there it takes control of lights and windows and things like that so as you can see then we can read the fault codes of every module on the car we go into actuation test here and what we've got now is a bigger list of um, things to control so let's go into power window front and then we've got open window driver so what we've got there then is activation for four seconds i'm going to hit activate and we should see the window there comes down so that works nicely there and then we can actually close it as well so close windows driver side activate four seconds and there we go windows closed so there you go there's your bi-directional and that was all there before i purchased the bmw software so it is bi-directional out the box um, however it does just depend on 
which kind of vehicle that you're connecting up to. If you're in the world of scan tools, you know, I hear it from all my friends in the independent world, one tool will not do it all. So, you know, a lot of people will buy multiple tools. However, pretty impressed with what this did um, when I first turned it on, especially for the money. I mentioned when I bought the BMW software that this increased the functionality of the tool itself. So let's take a look at some of those features in there now because some of them are really good, really valuable features. So the BMW software, I went and bought it myself. It was $49 for a year's worth of access, which I think is a fair price if you're gonna be using it quite often. And the amount of functionality that it gives you is, is also really quite worth it. So what we get is actually a host of uh, extra test plans for kind of activating components, also com component calibrations that aren't covered in the maintenance section of the tool. And also uh, we get the coding function as well. This is something that you get with um, the extra software then. We can see here that we've got special function. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. We can see there then we've got a list of commodities. So drive, chassis, body, driver assistance and maintenance. So if we go into the drive uh, commodity there, we can see there that we've got some bi-directional features right at the top. So open and close radiator blinds, increase idle speed temporarily. So let's um, take a quick look at that. So um, basically that's going to allow us to increase the engine idle speed. So uh, just tap in there the number we want. So we're going to go to 1000 there is a maximum there of three and a half thousand just tap off the screen to get rid of the keyboard click ok so what we can do then is press f1 to set the idle speed we can press f2 to put a new value in or f3 to actually uh, end the service function so you can see there now that we're at about kind of 700 750 or something like that so i'm going to click f1 now we can see there that the engine speed is now clicked up and that will hold it there then for a total duration of 30 seconds before ending it. Unless you click continue and it will turn it off itself. So let's exit that. So we can see there, I haven't got time to really go through all of these features, but we've got loads of stuff in here. So um, exhaust gas pressure sensor adaptation, automatic air flap control, We've got some DPF regen and replacement, so that's important on these cars because DPF is actually a service item. We've got EWS adjustment, that's actually really good because EWS is the immobiliser and sometimes if you've uh, replaced modules, you need to align the, the uh, engine control unit with uh, another control unit on the car to get the immobiliser to work. We've got some stuff on there for glow plugs, there was one on here which is really, really useful. And I never thought I'd see that on here. So that's the smooth running control. So those of you that know, will know about this. Um, this is a feature which really is invaluable when diagnosing injectors or diesel engine running problems. So basically what we get is a correction value for each injector while the engine's running and if you've got one that's out, it indicates that that injector is actually, is either adding more fuel or taking it away. So for example, if we've got a, a compression issue here in the UK, people like to drive their car through flood water and things like that, get sucked into the engine, slightly bends con rods and you know causes slight engine running problems. That can be picked up on here because the injector will start to put a bit more fuel in. Um, also, if the injector's faulty, maybe it's um, leaking off too much fuel, it will actually try and compensate for that by adding more fuel. And we can actually see that on here. Cylinder 1 is 0.5, 3 is 0.4, 4 is 0.1, cylinder 2, 0.17 as well. So, OK is minus 5 to 4, critical is over minus five or four now really if you're looking at some of these and one of them sticks out you know let's say you've got one of them on two or three and you know you've got a problem it would probably be worth looking at that injector or that cylinder should i say so really good to see that feature on there again that's not a feature of the tool that's a feature of the car so when the manufacturer builds the car and buys the fuel system off bosch or whoever 
they have to buy that diagnostic feature to actually go with the car. So just be aware of that when you kind of um, buying these uh, features they're, they're not always features of the tool as I said I can't go through all of these there's there's so much in there but it's really quite useful so let's have a look at the other kind of premium feature that you get when you buy the manufacturer software and that's the coding and programming section so as mentioned there are two uh, parts to this you will either need to use the coding function because you've re replaced a module or you'll be using the personalization coding. So this is maybe a customer wants the uh, car behavior to change to do something else. So here we can display the vehicle order. So that gives you everything that's fitted to the car basically. So, you know, for example, the instrument cluster knows that there's a ABS control unit fitted, you know, that's part of the vehicle order. We've got coding system list there. So if you go on here, this will give you the list of the modules that you can code. So for example, if you replace the instrument cluster, this is where you would go to recode it. Uh, we can back up and recover coding data. So that's probably quite a good idea to do. If you plan to do any coding or anything, make sure you back it up first. So if you do have any problems, you can go in and just um, reinstate the original coding. Personalization then. So um, this is where we can actually go in and make changes to the vehicle itself so it, it behaves in a different way um, like extra convenience options um, what we're going to go into here is we'll have a look at uh, the CAS system so we'll have a look at the CAS because there's quite a good one on there that's um, really quite useful um, we'll go to function selection um, this one here so press and hold the start button to eject the key automatically and unlock all the doors engines run in if we press and hold it it just turns it off you know i've still got to push the key to get it out let's go on to this feature then i'm going to go to enable and then hit okay so it's saying then turn off the ignition for 15 seconds and turn it back on again after Okay, that's 15 seconds up. So then we hit yes, we want to code. And we can see OBD's flashing away there. It's doing its thing. Coding has been completed. So now when we press and hold the start stop key, we can see it pulls out straight away. We can see here this is for the display. So we can do changes to the um, what we see on the display, also the head up display. We can put it into M mode, so that's like the M version of uh, BMW stuff. Uh, radio storage, weather station, so lo lots of different um, kind of features that you can change on there. Really useful, especially if you're working on a lot of BMWs all the time. And I imagine you get a similar options for all the other manufacturer softwares. Now, something else I wanted to show you, which um, I thought was quite impressive, and I, I've only seen this on the more expensive units, and this is in our maintenance section. So you can see here we've got maintenance and service, and this is where you've got all your kind of service features like ABS bleed, um, adaptive front lighting, AdBlue, your airbag resets and things like that. What we've got is the air fuel setting. Now, this is a diesel, so it's not going to work on this. Um, but what I think this um, function is, is where you can go in and actually turn off the closed loop um, operation of the fuel system. So let's say you're working with a rich or lean um, condition, your short and long fuel trims will actually counteract the fault. So the engine runs okay. So what this feature will do is actually turn off the closed loop control of the fuel system. So you're actually seeing what the engine actually runs like in real time. So that is an amazing feature. Um, I saw it on an Autel machine I was using not so long ago and it really good, really good. So as you can see in there, we've got all our other um, usual kind of uh, maintenance 
applications in there. So it'd be great to get your uh, opinions of, of this tool. Uh, again, any questions you have, let me know down below and I'll try my best to uh, answer them. Um, also, let me know what you think. My first impressions, really good tool, especially for the money.